Hello everyone, uh, this is bballer13sn, and I'll show you a few quick tips on how to script on Roblox. First, you'll have to download Roblox. Then, for me, I have Windows XP, so I go to Roblox Studio, but I'll show you how you will find it most likely. Get to your Roblox program folder, and you'll see these. Uh, that's my forget that here's play roblox which you most likely use to as it says play roblox however we're going to use roblox studio in order to do some scripting here's the starting roblox thing can get a little annoying at times but we'll survive it's loading well, I'll probably edit this out of the video. Anyway, so you click my Roblox, and what I like to do is click places. Real fast, real easy. Scroll down. Now I have a place set apart just for this. Oh, yeah. Check out all my games if you like, you know. Anyway. So, I'll, so make sure you click edit, or else this will not work at all. Uh, yeah, this, I will only be showing you how to get to this on video, on this video. All the others will be already here, and everything. Anyway, so you see a basic base plate, and then here's other stuff you should see. Which is all of this, which you'll be using. Well, not all, but a majority of it. The command bar, the output, the properties, and the next one. Now you probably only see the Explorer and the properties right now. To fix this, I need you to go up and click View. To find Output, click it. When you first see it, it will be somewhere like right here. Drag it. Drag, sorry that was a fail on me. Here we go right there. Now you will have to click view again toolbars command that will make this pop up very useful especially for C framing now let's get to the scripting part you click insert you then proceed and click object after this you will find script yes there's a lot of stuff in here but find script you can either double click it or single click and click OK you then click inside the script, and it should say this. Take out the print hello world, as you really don't need that. Right now, we're going to create a brick, actually two bricks, and have them both disappear, and have the, and when you step on one, the other brick disappears. Fairly simple, but you're just learning, so let's get to work local v1 now let me I'll write this line then dissect it for you local v1 equals uh, we'll name it oh yeah instance dot new part now let me explain all of this if you go to workspace and you click base you see these properties but you see its class name which is part that is what we will be making a part or a brick. So, part, and then local B2, we write the same thing. Oops, sorry. Instance.new part. Now, let me dissect this. The word local is when you define a nickname for a brick, script, value, etc., which you can find in your explorer. Local is a common term in many scripting languages, but we're just a Lua user right now. So, then we have the B1 and B2. This is what we are naming our brick, or our, our nickname, I should say. That's how we will call it in the script to save us time. We then have a space, an equal sign, and a space. What this part does, 
is the spaces are just there to make the script look cleaner, make it easier for you. The space, the equal sign, when you have a single equal sign, tells a script to make something equal to it. It doesn't say if it's equal. It says make it equal. So, for other, in other words, you could name. It's a lot. I'll show you later in later videos. Now we have the instance. Instance can be found here. Looks like a camera. That's what it is. It's what everybody else can see. It's what is in your game and what is visible. So now you're making instance dot new. This period is just a period. There is a special term for it, but I forgot it because I really don't care for the term. Then we have new, which tells the ser the server, this is something that isn't here yet. Let's make it. Come on. Then these parentheses. Now, the new is, is instance.new is a built-in Lua function. So, you have these parentheses around whatever the name is, and that's what we will call a parameter and the parameter is just a way to say special parts of a script that needs to do as it's told I, I'll go into greater detail later on oh and if you're wondering why I sound so sick it's because I am don't know why just woke up this morning and felt horrible so, let's keep up with this. You have this quotation mark, and then another one, and they both are purple, along with everything inside. That is what we call a string. Why it's called a string, I don't know. All it is, is words, put is just a sentence, or a word, or basically phrasing that doesn't matter. However, in this case, it does matter. Part is the type of class we are creating. So let's get to a better part of it, of the scripting. Oh, you'll notice these numbers, they help a lot. You'll figure that out on your own, I bet, though. Now, b1.parent equals game.workspace. b1. Dot anchored equals true and just for good measure b1 that can collide equals true now let me just remake all of this for b2 and then I'll dissect it okay so we have our b1 or our nickname then we have our period which basically it's just how you'll you'll use periods a lot, but you won't notice it. Now you have parent. Now this is a new term. What? I have two parents, but I didn't know my brick had a parent. What? What's this mean? Well, I'll show you. Back to the properties, and we still have base highlighted. Let's look through and see this parent. Oh, sorry, parent. Workspace. Workspace is big. It's everything in the game that is visible, just like instance, but instance is what makes it visible. Okay? So, workspace. That's its parent. Or, in other terms, the next thing you find in the explorer above it. So, it's hard to explain. You'll figure it out as we go along, I guarantee you. Once again, we have the equal sign. This is telling the script to do this, make it equal, I command you, do it. Okay? So game. What? Why do we have to say game? Is it everything a part of this game? Well, yeah, it is. But the game is telling it to go all the way up to explore and then down to whatever we find, which would be game dot 
workspace, which would be this. So this, so this will be found in workspace in your explorer. B1 dot anchored. If you've ever, if you're an advanced builder, you will know what anchored is. But for those of you who aren't, let's go to base and search its properties again. What do we see? A whole bunch of worthless stuff, right? Well, here's anchored. It's in the behavior section. And what anchored does is keep it still. Doesn't let it move. This is how you have floating bricks. Now, you go to B1 that can collide, and the word can collide can kind of make it obvious. You go back here, in behavior, there it is, can collide. Now, true is whenever it's checked, false is whenever it's not. So, can collide basically just is able to, able to hit, able for it to stop you. You can touch a brick without it having can collide, true, but let's just keep it this way so you can tell better, okay? Now we do the exact same thing for B2, which is just our nickname for a second brick. Let's continue. Function. This is how you create a function, or a list of things to do whenever something happens. So function b1 or we'll just call it untouched hit. Let's untouched is the name of my function. You can name functions whatever you want. Doesn't matter. Then you have our parentheses and inside is a parameter. Our parameter is what the script uses to know what you're telling it to do. Now we say if hit dot parent find first child humanoid then well the hit is whatever just touched our brick the if is if this happens continue with the rest of the script if it doesn't stop right here the hit dot parent finds whatever the parent is of whatever touched it then this colon indicates we're about to have a function. It's a built-in function. You'll figure this out also. Now find first child. Remember that parent thing right here? Well, a child is anything that is under a parent. So find first child would be finding anything that comes first and is its direct child and not a later descendant, okay? This is a built-in function. So we have our parentheses and then a parameter, again, in quotation marks, and it is the name of whatever the, hit that, of whatever the child's name should be, and it's humanoid. So this line basically tells us it's a player, because players always have a humanoid in their model, okay? So then we have the then, which is telling the, which is finishing off the if statement for this line. So we have the then. Also, I'd like to just say, you use these tabs to help keep, keep your script nice and clean. Every time you list a function, you need a new tab. Every time you have an if, a for, a while, and several other, th other things, you need a new tab so that you can keep track of how many ends you need E N D because I know it's hard to understand me right now. So now we're gonna have two tabs or white space or whatever you wish to call it. Then B two dot transparency. Make sure you spell that right. Equals one and B two dot can collide equals false. Transparency, another thing you'll find in properties. One is completely invisible, zero is completely visible, and anything in between, such as point three, is only partly visible and partly invisible. 
it does work on a decimal system, which most everything does on properties. So then you have our transparency, our do this operator of an equal sign, and then one, whatever we want transparency to equal. In this case, one, which means completely invisible. Then B2, that can collide, equals false, which means make, which means let me walk through it. Then we have an end and another end. That this end, the one that's currently blue, goes with this if, because the if needs an end. And then this end, which is currently plain text, ends the function, because the function needs an end. Okay? Now we hit enter, because it makes it look better. Twice, that is. And we'll have our connection, which is basically telling the script, when this happens, do the function, and do everything in it. You'll understand. So, B1, our nickname for our brick one. B1 dot touch, which means it's hit by something. Connect. Connect on touched. Okay? It's pretty basic. Connect just means do it when this happens. Now for our other one. B2 dot touch. Connect function hit. See, we're using a new type of function. There, I don't know the name for it or if it has a name. But basically, this function won't have a name, so you can't call it anywhere in the script. It just happens when whatever the connecting is happens. Okay? It's just an easy, it's just a quicker, more efficient way of writing this. Okay? So. We'll just write basically the same thing, but switching it for B1. If hit that parent, find first child humanoid. Remember what this means? Okay, good. Because I'm not asking. B1, that transparency, excuse my spelling there, equals 1. And B1, that can collide, equals false. End, end. Now see, these. this end is the same as this end, but this end is different than this. Why is that? Well, because, as you can see, we have a parenthesis with no closer. Every parenthesis needs another parenthesis of the opposite shape. So we needed a parenthesis for that to tell the function it's really over. Those ends aren't just there for show. They're, it's over. Okay? Now let's test this out. Tools. Test. Play solo. Now, let it load. And your character should appear. Okay? Hold up. Well, this is going to be edited out, I hope. There we go. It's loading. As you can see, it's popping up and stuff. There's my camp studio and everything. Robux! Yes! Now let's go down, click visit. Everything's still loading here. There's my character. Yes. Bballer13SN. Currently called player because we're in a test server. Which is hosted basically on your computer. There's our output, our command bar, our properties, and our explorer. And there's my epic face. Oh yes, you've got nothing on that. Okay, well, now I see. It's not working. Why, why is it not working? There's no bricks here. Nothing, What? what's going on? Well, we go to our trusty output. And look around to see what could possibly be going wrong. And you see, it's not telling us anything's wrong with the script, so, uh, yeah. Why is it doing this? Because it's a test server, and I never rely on making my bricks via script. 
because I never can get it to work, even though it should be simple. So we X out of this. No, we don't want to save changes to our visit. And now I'm just going to insert object. Let's see if we can find party here, or if not, I'll just, you know, go the old fashioned way. Ah, part. There's our part. Now we'll name this B1. No, brick 1. And change it to anchored. Copy it. Which I used Control C to copy and Control V to paste. And we'll move this over here and change its color. Just so everybody knows which can be found in properties. Which is just so everybody knows which brick is which. Brick 2 will be red. Okay, so we have our brick 1 and brick 2. Now we go back to our script by double clicking it. Let's take out this whole worthless part here and change this to game.workspace.brick2 game ah sorry dot workspace dot brick2 and we do the same thing here just change it to brick1 but we're gonna change it up just a little so you guys know what to do find first child just to practice this song brick one. Okay? There you go. Tools, test, play solo. Now let it load. I might edit this part out of the video because it's completely boring, even for me. Yes, I'll admit it. Let's explore empty base plate with all these studs. Ooh, clouds that are made by pixels. So exciting, I guess. Okay. And it's loading. This video might need to be shortened up or put into two parts. So, okay. Here's my player again. With my epic face. All that. Yeah. Ownage. Ponage. Oh, yes. Whoa. We landed on our brick. But where's brick 2? Let's go to workspace. It's here. Whoa, look, it's highlighted. What, where, where's our brick 1 now? We just touched brick 2 and our script worked. But it's not perfect. They don't come back. Why is that? Let me show you. Let's go in and do, and do a little more. Let's put in a wait of three seconds. Yes, wait, built-in function, then our two parentheses and our parameter, which for wait is how many seconds. So you could put point zero or point one. I don't know how low you can go. I think it's point zero three or something. But we'll just go with three seconds right now. Then. B2 dot transparencer equals two. Just kidding. Two is worthless. All I'll do is change back to one. Can collide equals true. Now let's copy this. Right it. And yeah, we're pretty much good to go on all of this. So let's test it. Oh wait, B1. I almost forgot. That's embarrassing. Okay. Now, you already know all of this, so I'm not going to dissect it. Just dissect it yourself if you need to. It's not just for good measure. I'm going to move both of these bricks slightly further away from where my guy is going to spawn, since there's no spawn location. That's good enough. Let's do one more test. Then we should be done for today. And uh, you'll be a basic scripter that can only do one thing. Good for you. You've got a lot more to learn.
whoever is watching this video. Because right now, you are new at scripting, and uh, this is going to be worthless for you in the long run. Because uh, making bricks disappear doesn't do anything for you. Yeah, you're not going to get to the front page for knowing this. I'm sorry. Uh, where is our test? It just kind of disappeared on me. Yeah, I'm seriously thinking of editing this part out. Uh, where's my test? Where's my test? Let's just do our test up again by clicking test play solo. Oh, damn. Just, uh, Roblox glitched! Yeah, Builder Man, let's fix this. Or Telemine, or whoever's in charge of this Roblox studio thing. I'm guessing it's Builder Man, though, because he's like the boss man of everything. There, it's loading. Hopefully, we don't lose it again. Or David Buz David Bazuki, I think is his name. I'm not sure. But uh, tell him I know is John Shedletsky. He tells you to follow him on Twitter. He's probably got way too many followers. We all go crazy for Telemine and his fried chicken. There's my play area. Now, this is brick one, I believe it was. So let's step on it. Yay, our red brick disappeared. <gasps> it came back this time. Let's see if it works. If it oh, I accidentally. Now they're both gone. There. Now let's see if I touch the red, if the white disappears. Let's see if it comes back. It does! We have a successful script! Now you just have to learn a lot more and you might be worth something. Well, good day to you people. Remember all of it. I'll, I'll just show you how to exit real fast. Because it's, uh, you know, useless. But save. Why not? I'll be using them in later tutorials. X out of my... Why does it say Roblox visit when this is obviously... Oh, there's our visit we lost. Okay, well, goodbye everyone. Thanks for watching.